Robin, there are a lot of questions from experts on whether uh, the U.S. could have gotten more out of the North Korean leader about how he will verify denuclearization. But is this at least a step in the right direction? Look, on, on balance, if you think of where we were six, nine months ago, I think this is for the world a step in the, in the right direction. Um, I think some of President Trump's maximum pressure, the increase in particular by the Chinese uh, of limiting oil flows as well as coal flows uh, to North Korea have had an impact economically. On the other hand, as we saw, uh, Kim Jong-un kind of got to where he needed to before he moved into the diplomatic vein. He's done uh, nuclear tests. He's pretty much moved into the gray zone of having a nuclear capacity of hitting the United States. So he'll feel that he was ready for this conversation with Trump. Trump, at his point, I think needs a foreign policy success and needed to make some, some progress here. Uh, the fact that the sanctions are still on, uh, the fact that there hasn't been any movement yet on a peace treaty means there's still a long, long, long way to go on this road. On balance, I feel he's probably given too much away too early in the process, but I don't think it's a bad thing that this uh, negotiation has started. Uh, Robin, one of the great constancies we see from former military officers, senior command officers, is the idea that war games matter. What is the president giving up? What is the president losing from our militaries, plural, if we stop doing war games? Well, I, th I think this is a really important uh, point because, uh, you know, any military commitment is only as real as it is in terms of its readiness. So I think the president's comments about these being expensive, unnecessary is, is not factually correct. That being said, if you are going to create a space for a genuine conversation uh, uh, with the North Korean, re North Korean regime, uh, this has been their absolute red line on their side, which is at least doing a halt. And I think Trump needs to, to, to test... Uh, 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 Kim Jong-un out. If they hold off on uh, military exercises for a time-limited period um, to allow some of the progress he mentioned at the end of the press conference he wanted to do, then he's got leverage to be able to impose those, uh, uh, those exercises back on a six or nine months' time. I don't think uh, the readiness will collapse in that period. Plus, I think the South Korean uh, government, President Moon, would probably like to see some space created for uh, these negotiations to move forward. So I think as a tactical move, it's okay. Obviously, if these were taken off the table entirely, that would be a very, very bad step. Robin Niblett, other than the emotion of giving us uh, our dead and deceased from 60, I believe it's 66 years ago, at Porkchop Hill, what does Chairman Kim, as he's called, what does Chairman Kim have to give up in negotiations? Well, uh, ultimately, if, if you're going to get to a real deal, um, he's going to commit to a process of slowly removing his nuclear capability, and that is the you know, complete verifiable uh, and irreversible steps that everyone's laid out, which will mean literally having to have inspectors uh, you know, in North Korea verifying that those plants are closed down, that the uh, new probably that they're not allowed to be able to manufacture and enrich nuclear fuel. I mean, it's going to be a massive uh, agenda. Remember how much further ahead they are than Iran. Think how complicated the Iran deal was, and Iran had not even tested a nuclear weapon. So to, to get to the end destination is almost going to be interminable, in my opinion. And what I feel we've ended, entered into here is a process of ongoing negotiation that could last many, many years. Now, one people will say, maybe it's better to have an ongoing process of negotiation than the risk of an immediate conflagration. Uh, and President Trump might feel that's enough of a win for him right now that he stopped the escalation of the process of threat, uh, even if we never get to an end state that people would recognize as, as, as complete denuclearization. Robin, how significant is it that the U.S. is keeping these sanctions on North, North Korea in effect? Well, I think it's very significant, uh, but more significant will be whether the Chinese keep their sanctions in effect, um, mm -hmm. because uh, the Chinese have taken some steps over and beyond those that have been publicly announced, in particular on the oil side, um, which I think have had real impact. Now, the Chinese may decide that given that uh, President Trump is on his moment in the sun, they need to uh, apply a little bit of pressure into the negotiations themselves, and there have been reports already of some easing on some of the uh, trade across the border uh, between North Korea and China. So to me, look, the, the, real, the maximum pressure really emerged from China, because China, feeling it was under pressure from the United States in the broader trade negotiations. So the question is, what does China do on the sanctions? That's what I would be watching.